Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. Today we're going to talk about how using food rewards can affect motivation while training your dog. Outside of normal feeding, there are two applications for using food with dogs. Food can be used as a reward or a motivator during your training, or food can be used in toys to pass time while the dog is alone. Every dog, no matter the age, the breed, the sex, the size, responds to two basic motivators. That is the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of displeasure. When food and treats are used properly, they'll become a powerful tool to motivate your dog during training or to occupy your dog's time when you're gone and he's alone. Many people don't give a lot of thought to the kind of treats that they use. They underestimate how important it is to vary the treats used in different applications. I must confess that I fell into this category many years ago. I started taking dog training seriously back in the dark ages of the 1960s when people like William Kohler or Winifred Strickland were considered experts in the field. Using food to train back then was almost unheard of. The argument was, well... If you train with food, at some point in time, you're going to have to stop, and what are you going to do then? Because you may not have food on you. Well, dog training has come light years from where it was back in the 60s, and that question has been answered. Kohler and Strickland have become the Model T Ford of the training industry. It's kind of like they got you around, but it wasn't very pretty. We've learned that when it's done properly, Motivating a dog with food creates a dog that enjoys training, wants to take part in the learning process, and a dog that becomes a problem solver. Using treats in your work also improves the bond between the dog and the handler. When a handler embraces the fact that he's going to use food in training, he must learn how to do this correctly, and marker training or clicker training is hands down the best way. I've written articles on my website about marker training, and it's on my DVDs. It was marker work that opened our eyes to the fact that different dog treats can produce different results in our training. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. So just as importantly as learning when and how to use food treats is learning what kind of food treats to use according to the criteria of what you're trying to train at the moment. Back in the early 1980s, my DVDs showed how to cut up small pieces of hot dogs and use them as treats during obedience training. And there's nothing wrong with doing that today. But in the past 25 years, we have seen a huge improvement in the number and the quality of dog treats that are available. Feeding dogs an all-natural diet has become popular because people like myself recognize the fact that most commercial dog food is crap. This was dramatically demonstrated with the recent pet food recall that killed thousands of dogs. In fact, over the last six or seven years, the popularity of feeding an all-natural diet has fueled an explosion of all-natural dog treats. Fifteen years ago, the only thing that was really available were those little multicolored dog biscuits that you can still buy today at Walmart or Kmart or the pet food warehouses. My dogs, having been fed a raw natural diet their entire life, won't even touch these things for good reason. God only knows what they're made of, but I won't go into that now. The good news is today we have a number of different options of all natural dog traits, and you do need options for a number of reasons. For one thing, the treats that my dogs love may not be the treats that your dogs love. All treats carry a different motivational value for your dog. It's your job to constantly think about your dog's reaction when you use a specific food treat. Learn to read your dog's reaction to them. Some treats have so high of a value they cause a dog to stop thinking. Some dogs can't focus when they know you have a high-value treat in your hand. These high-value treats cannot be used as motivators on complex tasks that require a dog to think a lot because the dogs are so focused in on the treats. 
new trainers would think that the more difficult the task, the better the treat should be, and that's not the case. A difficult task requires a dog to focus on what he's doing and not focus on the food reward that's in your hand. So my point here is that some exercises do require lower value treats. Trainers need to be aware of these exercises and then be prepared to use the treat with the correct value for the work that you're doing at that moment in time. I will reward my dog for coming to me on a walk with a mid-level treat. In that circumstance, I don't mind if the treat is crunchy and it takes him a few chews to get it down his throat. It doesn't matter if it takes up a couple seconds, like liver biscotti is an excellent choice there. On the other hand, during marker training, I want my treats to be very easy to swallow. I want them to be gone almost instantly as soon as the dog gets them in his mouth. The softer treats like Simon and Huey's soft training treats are perfect for this because I don't want a dog to take time to chew a treat up and that slows down the flow of the training. Now here, Cindy's just giving Rush, our puppy, a liver biscotti. And if you don't think that some dogs take longer to chew some treats than other treats, have a look at Rush here. You'd think... You would think he's chewing gum or a leg of lamb. Talk about stretching out one treat. But obviously, to use liver biscotti for him in marker training would be the wrong treat. When he's done eating this next year... (laughs) We'll show you how quickly he eats other treats. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't use liver biscotti in his training. If he's laying in the crate, being good, being quiet, we'll go up and we'll give him a liver biscotti because we don't care if it takes a minute to eat. Now, watch what happens when we give Rush one of these uh, Play-Doh dog treats, a very small portion of one of these. You see, that's only a small part of the treat. These larger treats we break up. You see how quickly he eats that? Now that treat could be used for marker training and is used when we train Rush. This is a 30-minute streaming video, but YouTube doesn't allow that long of a video. If you'd like to watch the rest of the 30 minutes of this video, you can come to my website, go to Learberg.com, forward slash treat dot htm and you can watch the entire 30 minutes if you're not aware of it leerberg.com is the largest dog training website on the internet it has over 10,000 pages on the website all of it dealing with dog training it also has the largest dog training forum on the internet at the time that this podcast was put up there was 12,500 registered members with over 150,000 posts in a searchable archive. So come to Learberg.com and you can watch the rest of this streaming video along with many others.